I really don't understand this town. I don't know how it doesn't implode. The other night when we had the ice storm, the 30 car pile up on I-5 and the Twilliger curves. No one was like seriously injured. All these cars and trucks are sliding everywhere. People just keep trying to drive by. The city had to dispatch a city bus to pick up all the people that were involved in the accident. This city is just really strange. I, I don't understand it. I've lived here all my life. I can still take a step back and see all these freaking idiots running around. I don't get it at all. No, no, no. He doesn't. And don't get me wrong, traffic accidents are never good. It just seems strange to me that people decide, oh hey, let's run around at 60 miles an hour on the ice. They've got really good warning systems, there's flashing lights, there's billboards, there's all kinds of things alerting the drivers to slow down, and that there's ice, and that there's freezing conditions. So the fact that those cars are coming around the corner 50, 60 miles an hour, um, yeah, I... It's time to make the rounds. Saturday morning, gotta go check on a few things. Unfortunately, my Apple Watch is still updating. It's been going now for about 45 minutes, not even halfway done. For the update to work, you have to keep your phone nearby and your watch has to be connected to power. Luckily, I have a portable Apple Watch battery pack. So basically, I just snap my band around the back here. It's still connected to power, so you can see there. It's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery in there, so we're good to go. I can just throw this thing on the seat in the van and let it finish up. I don't know why it takes like 90 minutes to update a watch. It just seems weird to me. Two of the naked chalupas, both at beef, and uh, a large water. Well, I was gonna stop by the local dumpster and see if I could find any more wheelchair parts, but unfortunately today they were doing some stuff outside and I couldn't really get over there. So uh, let's go find something else to do. I came down to Wilsonville and the plan was to run around here in this park. I was gonna run around in this park and catch some Pokemon or something like that. And then there's a Goodwill right over here. But unfortunately, it's raining now. I'm gonna eat my chalupas and listen to some Reasonable Doubt podcast. I'll see what the weather's doing when I'm done eating, but probably just wind up going into Goodwill. And uh, that's about it. Goodwill trip was successful. It's not raining right now, so I'm gonna do a couple power laps here real quick. Well, <clears throat> I got about halfway around the loop and it started raining, um, raining enough to where I'd start getting soaked. So back to the van. Perfect time to go over our raid on Goodwill and what I got. A couple of uh, zipper pouches. These are great for like cell phone cords and other things that go inside your bag. Brand new from 1981, a multimeter and electrical circuit value pack test kit. Yeah, it looks like it hasn't been opened. It was seven bucks. Comes with a carrying case. All right, here's our continuity circuit checker thing. An inductive electrical probe. This also feels like it doesn't have any batteries in it. Has a flashlight built into one end. Uh, takes a couple of double A's, and normally the way these work is this end will light up if you get it near a live electrical circuit. The DVOM, digital volt ohm meter. Uh, there's no cables, hopefully, oh. Hopefully they're inside here. Oh, wow. We actually, uh, we've got the meter probes. There's even a temperature probe in here. Hey, look at that. This plugs into the base of the meter, and then you've got your little tiny thermal couple right here on the end of this. It's got the Intertech logo right here, so that's how you know it's cheap electronics. I also got the world's tiniest trailer hitch. Look at that. It's got little U-bolts uh, on there, and a little receiver, room for a pen. This was really cheap at $3. Uh, my plan is to use this on the new off-road chair, which I'm picking up on Monday, so that'll be good. I figure that thing will definitely need some sort of trailer hitch receptacle, at least for towing around small stuff. I love it when I find stuff at Goodwill that's exactly what I need. Alright, to the elsewhere. This elevator's kind of funny. The window goes right into the kitchen. It's happening.
happened again. Somebody's parked in my parking space. It's these two spaces right here. Ordinarily, I would just go park somewhere else, but it's pissing rain. And I do not want to get out of my van in the rain. So I called their security department and we'll see uh, if we can get something taken care of here. After last time they showed up and they told me, oh, we can't actually do anything because we don't know it's your space. So I had the office actually write a paperwork proving this is my parking space. They should be out here soon and someone's vehicle is probably going to get towed, unfortunately. Turns out security was already on site for a noise complaint. I've got my paperwork proving it's my parking, so tow truck time. Not only did they park in my space, they don't have a permit for this garage at all. And they couldn't even park between the lines. Look at that. Well, the guy from security uh, put a towing tag on it. And they called the towing company. So basically now, just have to wait for the tow truck to show up. And there's no telling when that's going to be. Problem is, I don't have a disabled parking permit for this van. I've got two of them and they're in my other two vans and they need them where they're parked. I guess I could just go downstairs and hang out near the garage entrance and stay with the van. Because if I park this in a space without the disabled parking permit, they could potentially tow me. I guess I get to wait around for the tow company now. And they stuck their little notice on the windshield there. Just got back from a restaurant with a friend. It was his birthday yesterday, so we went out. I'm gonna head upstairs and throw my leftovers in the fridge. Then come back downstairs and wait for the tow truck. I was also realizing that I probably need to stay out of sight. I've not had good experiences with this tow company in the past, and I don't necessarily want to talk to them. It's like 1.30 in the morning now. I'm tired of waiting around for this tow truck, so... Um, I'm just gonna have to go park somewhere else and uh, throw the cone up next to my van. Hopefully, it doesn't get towed. I don't think it will. I wound up staying up till like 4 a.m. waiting for the tow truck to show up. Eventually, I just went to bed and figured, well, whatever. Someone left upstairs and opened up a place that I could actually use, so I just parked there. So I just came down to move my van, and look. Someone else has now parked in my space. I just went down to the office, gave him the photo of the vehicle that's now parked in my space, gave him the number off the hang tag, the little permit on the windshield, and they said, we don't have a way of looking that up. You require people to have permits, but then you don't know whose car is who and who owns what permits. The last management company, when they left, didn't leave any of the records, apparently. Uh, this is annoying. This is happening now at least once a week. Someone parks in my space, and I'm done with it. Before, I would try to figure out whose car it was and see if they could move it, but I, I'm done screwing around. I'm just, I'm gonna have everything towed. No questions asked. Your car gets taken away. I, I don't know what else to do about it. What I wound up doing last night, I gave myself a limit. I said, if they're not here by 4 a.m., I'm just gonna have to go to bed. There's someone I know that works nights who parks on a different floor. I went up there and figured if I parked in their spot and I was out by early enough in the morning, we'd be good. I I'm not a fan of people getting their cars towed, but if they're not gonna look at the ground and look at the signs and see where it says reserved, everyone just keep doing it over and over again. I guess you've got it coming. I don't know what else to do. I've wasted dozens of hours with parking issues and I pay for parking and I would like to be able to use it like everyone else so sorry guys <laughs> your cars are gonna start disappearing on you I used to not mind the rain but I mean when you start getting completely soaked as a result of it um, I would rather park inside the garage <laughs> Mysteriously vanished. That's much better.